and sitting in for Dr. Wallach today, we do have Dr. Peter Glidden. Welcome to the show, Dr. Glidden. Thanks so much, Doug. It's always a pleasure to be here. Hello, everybody who is interested in living a long, healthy, happy, and prosperous life. I'm Dr. Peter Glidden. I'm a licensed naturopathic physician, 23 years of clinical experience helping people recover their health with science-based, clinically verified, safe and effective non-drug treatments. I'm a big fan of Dr. Joel Wallach's. I've been practicing uh, naturopathic medicine for a long time now, over two decades. And I was very good at what I did, and I still am. But since I've been following Dr. Wallach's lead, using Dr. Wallach's protocols, Dr. Wallach's research, the longevity products, the results that I'm seeing eclipse anything that I had previously done and I had done everything. If you're interested in clinically verified effective methods of health recovery, if you're tired of fumbling around at the health food store, if you're tired of getting advice about uh, health uh, support that you can do from people with no education, no training, or limited education and limited training, then you need to align yourself with longevity. Find a longevity distributor. <clears throat> Go to a longevity event. Dr. Wallach and I lecture about 400 times, 400 times a year all around the country. Our lectures are free all of the time because we're on a mission. What's the mission? The mission is to change the way that medicine is practiced in the United States, to open people's eyes to the wonders of medical nutrition. What did they say in the Old Testament? My people suffer and die because of lack of knowledge, right? We're going to start today's show with a couple of quotes. Howard Aiken, a very famous computer engineer, said, Don't worry about people stealing your ideas. If your ideas are that good, you'll have to ram them down people's throats. I couldn't agree more, Howard. Here's another one. It ought to be remembered that there is nothing more difficult to take in hand, more perilous to conduct, or more uncertain in its success than to take the lead in the introduction of a new order of things, because the innovator has for enemies all of those who have done well under the old conditions and lukewarm defenders among those who may do well under the new. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. That's Max Planck, a very famous physicist. Another way to say that, science advances funeral by funeral. It is a common misconception in the world to believe that scientists, especially medical doctors, are open-minded. They are not. You would think that a medical doctor or a scientist would only attend to the facts, but they do not. Medical doctors especially attend to what they have been taught and what their colleagues do. Their colleagues attend to what they've been taught, by whom they've been taught, and so forth and so on to the beginning of time. The father of our country, George Washington, was convinced that in order to help himself recover his health, he had to bleed himself. And they killed him. They bled him to death. Thank you, Mr. M.D. We suffer in this country <clears throat> with our health because we've bet on the wrong horse. It's as simple as that. The only medicine that our insurance pays for, the only medicine that we're aware of, the only medicine practiced in the hospitals that we go to, the only medicine that we really have any, any functional understanding of at all, is MD-directed medicine. And think about it. Medical doctors have even co-opted the entire term medicine, right? They, they're not, they don't refer to themselves as allopathic doctors. They don't refer to themselves as pharmaceutical doctors. They don't refer to themselves as surgery doctors or reductionistic doctors. They refer to themselves as medical doctors. It was genius. Quite frankly, whoever co-opted that name was a genius. Because what that does is it sets the idea in the back of our minds that these people are the sole purveyors of medicine and that everybody else is back of the bus, right? Medical doctors, bless their hearts, do not practice health care. 
They practice disease management. There is a gigantic difference between health care and disease management. We have a health care crisis in this country, not because of insurance corruption, not because of fraud, not because the government is in bed with health care companies and pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies. The only reason that our health care costs are skyrocketing, the only reason, is because MD-directed pharmaceutical medicine does not work. It doesn't work. It does not work for chronic illness. And yet we line up like lemmings, following each other over the cliff to their dooms for one more prescription medicine. Please, sir, please, could I have one more prescription medicine? Please don't mess with my insurance. Please, listen, when you buy insurance, what are you doing? You're betting that you are going to get so sick that you will not be able to afford the care. You're betting that you're going to get so sick you will not be able to afford the care. I want you to think about that. That's a poor bet. What's a much more sane bet? A new idea, a brand new idea that only Dr. Wallach is talking about? Use your health insurance money instead of paying for health insurance for disease prevention. Use your health care dollars to buy nutritional supplements. Educate yourself about science-based, clinically verified alternatives to drugs and surgery because we do not get sick because we have a pharmaceutical deficiency. We need to wake up, America, and I'm just the man for the job. Dr. Peter Glidden sitting in for Dr. Joel Wallach, taking your calls on the other side of the break. You're listening to Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS radio network and filling in for Dr. Joel Wallach today. We do have Dr. Peter Glidden. If you'd like to talk to Dr. Glidden today, call us on the priority line at 831-685-1080 or toll free at 888-379-2552. Hi, Judy DeVilvis here. I want to talk to you again about Longevity products. I know I talk about it all the time, and, you know, I know you're probably tired of hearing it, and I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry to keep reminding you of things you need to do in your life every single day. One of those things would be to take the essential fatty acids. Our body does not make essential fatty acids, and they are very essential to our health. So you must take them. You must supplement with them. Longevity has a product called EFA Plus. That's EFA Plus. It's the product that I take every single day, and I like the EFA Plus because it has the salmon oil in it. And you know, today is a day of bad trans fats and good fats. This is a good fat. And the minimum that you should take every single day would be 9 grams, which would be 9 capsules, 3 after every single meal. For more information on this product, call your local Longevity associate today. We're back on Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS radio network and filling in for Dr. Joel Walling. Today we do have Dr. Peter Glidden. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Glidden. Hey, Doug, thanks a lot. And listening, my listening audience here, uh, please visit my website, drglidden.com. There's lots of free information there. There are some free videos right on the front page. It's going to tell you why wheat, barley, rye, and oats are bad. It's going to give you a list of good food, bad food, and You get to review my book, and maybe even, if you like what I have to say, purchase a copy. So, Doug, what are we talking about today? I thought we'd talk a bit about weight loss. As you know, about a third of all U.S. adults are obese or at least overweight. And, uh, of course, uh, some people like to take the silver bullet and take a drug to try and do that. Of course, way back in the 90s, they did approve a, a weight loss drug. It's the only one that was ever actually been approved by the uh, FDA, and of course, in reference to Orlistat, which is known brand name wise as Ali or Ali and Zedical. Well, now we're seeing that Canadian researchers have done a study, and lo and behold, they have found that Zedical increases your risk of kidney injury. So we've known for a while that it has increased your risk of possibly getting kidney stones, and also now they're finding it could 
actually damage your liver, your pancreas, and uh, so these are all vital organs. In fact, it's bad enough that the Consumer Watchdog Group, Public Citizen, which of course is Dr. Sidney Wolf's group, he's the director, he says these drugs have the potential to cause significant damage to multiple critical organs, and yet they provide meager benefits in reducing weight loss in obese and overweight patients. And because of all these fears of problems, you know, interestingly enough, the kidney damage is not even listed as one of the side effects on the black box warning on that drug. So yet again, the FDA, in their infinite wisdom, has put drugs out on the market that are going to be problematic. And as we know from track record, prior history with the FDA, more likely than not, these drugs will never be pulled off the market. They'll either, which uh, in one story here, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, which is the maker of Ali, they say, well, we're actually thinking about selling this brand. So they'll probably sell it to some third world country where they haven't heard about all these problems <laughs> and continue to poison people across the globe. And it just never ceases to amaze me. You know, we think back a few years ago to Merck and Company's Viox, and many were calling, even FDA advisors were calling for at least the black box warning to be modified, and some even calling for the drug to be pulled from the market. Did the FDA do that? No. The drug's no longer on the market. Why? Because Merck pulled it off themselves because of fear of lawsuits, because of all the strokes and deaths that were occurring because of that drug. It just it, It's just so insane that the American public is led to believe that the FDA is out there looking out for their own good, when in reality they're out looking to make sure that Big Pharma continues to steamroll over Americans. And it's such a big thing. You know, I swear to God, I think we all have Stockholm Syndrome in this country, right? I think, you know, Stockholm Syndrome is when you're kidnapped by somebody and the person who was kidnapped develops uh, fond feelings for the kidnapper, right? It's, it's kind of a weird psychological thing that happens to people <clears throat> who are under significant amounts of stress. I think we all have Stockholm Syndrome in this country when it comes to medical care because the medical profession keeps letting us down. They keep generating drugs that hurt us. There's a third leading cause of death in the United States is medical treatments. 15,000 Medicare patients a month are killed by medical doctors. 15,000. That stat was released by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 15,000 a month. All of these drugs all of the time produce all of these side effects and we don't bat an eyelash. I want you to imagine what would happen, ladies and gentlemen, if one chiropractor, you know, or one naturopath or one herbalist gave one patient an herb and it destroyed their liver, right? We'd be pilloried in the town square. There'd be outrage. It would be all over the newspapers. Oh, those quacks. But medical doctors do this to us every day, all of the time, and we don't bat an eyelash. As a matter of fact, not even do we not bat an eyelash but we get our community and our friends together to do 5K runs to raise money to give to the pharmaceutical companies so they can make more of this stuff that hurts us. Uh, quite frankly, you know, we're living in a 100% upside-down world, but the only reason that we put up with such nonsense is because we're in pain, we're suffering, and we need help, and we do not know that there is a viable alternative. Well, ladies and gentlemen... Longevity is that viable alternative. Like I say, give longevity a try or suffer and die. Dr. Peter Glidden, coming back with you, taking your phone call in just a minute. You're listening to Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS radio network with your host today, Dr. Peter Glidden, filling in for Dr. Wallach. <laughs> 